all right guys welcome in today's video here to give you some updates and i have a video that we need to watch this was on cnbc the other day and it's talking about how oil could be pushed up to 140 dollars uh here very soon and i said that my prediction i think we're going to see oil around 150 dollars sometime here in the summer so we'll see if that happens uh could be right could be wrong but let's hear what this gentleman has to say in this interview all right so here's the article uh, it says price cap on Russian oil is a ridiculous idea and could push oil to $104, says the Energy Resource Group. Here's a couple of the key points. The U.S. wants to put a cap on Russia's oil prices to reduce funds flowing into the country's war chest while bringing down the cost of oil for, uh, for consumers. Here it says the Institute of Analysts of Global Security said price cap would be like visiting a shop and asking the seller to accept less money for the product being purchased. And then this last bullet point, that's not how oil markets work, he said. This is a very sophisticated market. You cannot force the prices down. So here we go. Let's listen to what this gentleman has to say. About well, it's kind of a rid ridiculous idea in my view because it, it ignores the fact that oil is a fungible commodity. You know, you you may decide that you don't like the price and you want to pay much less. But every time I go into a shop, I have this uh, idea that maybe I should uh, ask the, 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 the seller to accept less money for for the product. But that's not how the oil market works, as as, as you know very well. Sri, you, you know, um, this is a, a, a very sophisticated market. Um, you cannot force the prices down. Uh, it's um, it, all it, it's going to do is going to cause the Russians to restrict their production, or lower their production, and create an artificial shortage in the market. So mm -hmm. those Europeans uh, uh, and Americans that are talking about forty dollars a barrel, um, what they're going to get is one hundred and forty dollars a barrel, uh, because you cannot trick the laws of supply and demand, and and you cannot defy the laws of gravity. Uh, when it comes to a fungible commodity. Gal, back to uh, the Middle East. And does the apparent U.S. reliance on Saudi oil still belie this narrative of U.S. energy independence? Is it a myth or reality? Well, you know, I've been saying for years that it doesn't matter how much oil the U.S. imports. What, what the U.S. imports is not the oil itself, it imports the price of oil. So it doesn't matter how energy independent it is or self-sufficient it is, it's always going to be part of the global market. And when the price goes up, it goes up for everybody. It doesn't matter how much oil you import and from whom. Um, and therefore, um, the situation in the Middle East and as well as in Russia and other big hubs of production will always be relevant to the United States economy. Uh, even if it doesn't import a drop of oil from, from anywhere. So, so I think that we have to really understand, again, that this is a fungible commodity. The price is more or less equal to everyone. And when the price goes up, it goes up for everyone. When it goes down, it goes down for everyone. And um, that's how this market works. All right. So there was that um, interview there. And... I have to agree. Choosing T-Mobile is like paying oh, for gosh. this. But there we go. Uh, I have to agree. Uh, you just can't force down the price of oil. It, it, like I said, I agree. The market just don't work that way. It ain't like I say, I want to buy Tesla stock at $400. I just can't force the price of that stock down to $400. Markets don't work that way. Uh, so I know it's probably a bad analogy there. But anyway, just giving an example. We always want something for less, but it just don't work that way. If people's out there requesting, 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 uh, like if everyone's buying Tesla stock, I can't buy for 400 if it's trading eight, 900. It just ain't going to work that way. Uh, so a similar thing here of oil. People keep out there getting oil, 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 and requesting oil and buying oil. It's not going to, you know, work that way. So I still think oil is going to make a huge uh, bounce here soon. Uh, like I said, could be right or wrong on that, but I think a bounce is coming. Not that I'm really happy for it because I'm kind of happy that gas is coming down a little bit, but... For our dividend, next bridge, MMTLP, this whole big deal, uh, let's hope that something happens. All right, so let's go take a look at what happened here today. Uh, first, I want to give a congrats to Meta Materials. Finished the regular trading hours at a dollar. 
Uh, and they nudged us down here after hours at 0.2%, uh, down to be at 99.8%. So 99 cents, 0.8. So they got us below a dollar, but it would have been nice to see after hours close above a dollar, but we did hit the regular hours there. Uh, and as you can see up here in the S and P futures and the, the futures for tomorrow, S and P is down 13 points. The Dow is down 27 points. NASDAQ is down 83 points. The Russell is down five points. And crude oil is up one point. Uh, so we had a little earnings today. And Meta came in bad. Meta went down big after hours. And the big one was Snapchat. Uh, that got destroyed. Uh, Snapchat now is trading at like $12. Uh, that's a very interesting deal. One of, me and one of my buddies, my buddy Wancho, uh, we were kind of talking. And there's kind of stocks out there right now that are trading at very cheap valuations. And I think they're setting up for good buyout candidates. Uh, and Snapchat is going to be added to my list of one that I may be buying here uh, as a possible buyout surprise down the road because Snapchat, tra Snapchat trading at $12, it just seems like the valuation on that, it could be bought out by one of the big boys later on. Uh, and another one I think is Robinhood. Uh, Hood. So I think it's Snap and Hood are two stocks that uh, are pretty looking, setting up pretty good for a potential buyout. Like I said, it may or may not happen, uh, but I think it'd be a good opportunity to maybe, I'm going to do it. I'm already holding hood, a uh, small position of hoods. I was holding a small position. I'll probably try to get a small position of Snapchat and just see if we either get a run up or a buyout. And if it goes down, I'll probably just buy a little bit more and average down. If it shoots up, I'm going to sell it. Same thing with hood. If they announce a buyout, I'm selling it pretty much instantly. And as soon as that price spikes, the same thing with Snapchat. I'll sell it on the uh, news. All right. Volume today, average volume is 6.3 million. We need to trade at 2.5 million. Now, I must say, I'm a little disappointed because I thought the market makers were supposed to take this price down. Setting here to $1.46, we're green today, 1.39%. I'm very disappointed. I thought this was going to get down like lower. Uh, trading here is nothing. Uh, I want to get down below a dollar. I want this to get down 20 cent, 10 cent, and they're not doing their job. I'm still upset. I want the dip in this, and this is not a dip. Uh, and take a look over here. The past five days down 23%. That's not good enough, guys. Uh, I want more than that. And if we go here and take a look from the low uh, back here, earlier today it was a dollar 39. Since then, we are up over 5% recovery. So, if that's all the market makers have on trying to drive this price down, it's pretty pathetic, honestly. Uh, I thought we'd see a lot better than that because this is nothing. Like, this ain't going to make anyone panic sell. This ain't going to make anyone really, uh, you know, go crazy. You know, I thought we'd get a drop down 10, 20 cents, maybe 50 cents, maybe a dollar. I thought dollar would you see a minimum. But like I said, they need to step up their game and get this down lower because I want to be able to buy more at a cheaper price. So, please. Get it down. Uh, take a look at the oil prices here today. WTI crude at 97.62. Uh, Brent crude $105.40. And natural gas setting high at $7.85. So oil's down a little bit, but natural gas is hanging up there in the $7, almost $8. Uh, let's go take a look here at the premium Fintel. So days to cover has went up. We're back up to 10.2 days. Um, short squeeze score is 67.55. Short shares that are available is 2.2 million at the leading prime brokers that the Fintel covers. Short bar fee still setting the same at a 22.73. And the FINRA short volume ratio is a 35.16. And the aggregate short volume ratio is a 36.78. So uh, short interest percent of float is about 10% right now. So, yeah, uh, that is pretty much it, what I got for you guys in today's video. Um, what else is going on? Well, this weekend is my birthday. Uh, if you're still here watching the video, uh, this Sunday, July 24th, is my birthday. So, uh, I'll probably come out and do a little special birthday video. I don't know what, really what I'll do, but maybe we'll do something. I don't know. Uh, so, hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, uh, please give a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below, and I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Peace.